Let me start off by saying you don't need a real estate agent. There, I said it. You don't need a real estate agent. You can buy a property, you can sell a property, you can invest in real estate, you can flip houses, and you certainly don't need a real estate agent by your side every step of the way. In fact, you may even save money if you don't use a real estate agent. And no, this won't be a video convincing you to use a real estate agent because let's be honest, if you think realtors are worthless and you don't like them, I'm just not gonna be able to change your mind. However, I have heard from sellers, buyers, and potential buyers that they do see the value. They do wanna use a real estate agent, but they have reservations because they've heard the horror stories. Whether it was from a friend, a family, or the internet, they have heard the horror stories about real estate agents. Maybe the agent did something unethical. Maybe that agent was greedy. Maybe they dropped the ball and they almost ruined the transaction. Or maybe the agent completely ruined the transaction. The bottom line is those horror stories exist and they exist because of one main reality. And that reality is there's a lot of bad real estate agents out there. According to the National Association of Realtors, there are approximately 1.4 million realtors in the United States. That's a lot of agents. That's like if the entire population of Dallas were all realtors. In addition to that, about 20% of realtors have only had their license for one year or less. And the way agents get paid is by closing deals, not by showing properties, not by going on home inspections, not meeting buyers for coffee. They only get paid when the deal closes. So maybe you're starting to see the issue here. There are a lot of real estate agents, there are a lot of inexperienced real estate agents, and the compensation model is linked to when you actually buy the property. So clearly herein lies the potential problem that could occur and the reason I made this video boils down to one specific question. How can you find a real estate agent that you trust? I believe right now is actually a really good time to be a real estate agent. Prices are increasing, a lot of people are buying, and homes are selling quickly. But at the same time, we're starting to see a lot of tech innovations that are starting to change the way that real estate is done. Whether it's the rise of iBuyers like Open Door and Zillow that'll buy your house with the click of a button, whether it's Redfin now displaying the buyer's agent commission in some markets, or whether it's a brokerage like Compass, which seems to have a new tech innovation every single month, there's a lot changing in the real estate industry. And I think what'll happen is all these tech innovators and disruptors, that's gonna make the good agents even better and it will eliminate the bad agents, the weekend warriors, the part-time agents that only do a handful of deals per year. But for now, those unethical agents, those agents that don't have the best reputation in the world, they're still around. So the question remains, guys, how can you find an agent that you can trust? How can you find an agent that will put your best interests ahead of their own best interests? The first thing I would think about if I was a buyer is to avoid dual agency. Dual agency is when the listing broker also represents the buyer in the transaction. They represent both sides of the transaction. So imagine if you were to walk into an open house, you like the house, you wanted to write an offer, and there's an agent in that open house, so you just talk with that agent about writing the offer. It seems convenient, but the job of that agent is to represent the seller and to get the seller the most amount of money possible for that listing. Now, that agent still could be the most trustworthy, most ethical person in the world, but one thing to think about is dual agency is actually illegal in some states. Some states it's illegal, other states it's legal. Even if your state allows it, I would avoid dual agency as a buyer at all costs. The second thing to think about when you're trying to find a trustworthy agent is you wanna understand who this real estate agent is. You wanna understand their story. You wanna understand their personality. So maybe ask them out for lunch and just have a non-business conversation. Don't even bring up real estate or ask them out for coffee and learn about who they are as a person. Is this someone that you can hang out with outside of a real estate conversation and know you don't need to be best friends with your real estate agent, but the goal of this is to understand their story and who they are as a person to see if that this is a type of person that you wanna do business with. And when you do meet with them, the realtor, they're gonna open up, you're gonna learn about if they're a full-time agent and their background and their story. And sometimes, guys, when I met with potential buyers, what they'll do is they'll immediately take out a notebook and just start drilling me with questions. It's like they just read an article on the top 10 questions 
to ask a real estate agent. It didn't feel natural. It doesn't feel normal in the conversation. So sure, if you want to ask those questions, go for it, but have a more natural way about it. Learn who the agent is as a person because you want to make sure their personality and their goals align with your home buying or your home selling goals. Perhaps the biggest issue I've heard from buyers is the fallacy that all realtors want the quickest and easiest sale possible. Now, is there some truth to that? Sure, but as a real estate agent, that's not my goal. Now, before you reach for that downvote button and call me a liar in the comments section below, let me explain myself. A quick and easy sale would be great, but you know what's better than a quick and easy sale? A happy client. What I often hear about realtors is that they're pushy, they're aggressive, they're salesy, they just wanna close the deal, They'll make up things to close the deal and they only look out for themselves. Guys, the list goes on. But the problem with that is those qualities don't make up a sustainable business. Imagine if all my clients felt that way. They all thought I was aggressive. They all thought they were suckered into a deal. How would those clients feel about me six months after they bought their house or a year after or three years after? My reputation would spread and I would become known as the greeting, lying real estate agent. Guys, that's not what I'm going for. I literally live in the smallest geographic county in the continental United States. I see my clients at Whole Foods. I see them at the gym and at the bar and at the restaurants in town. It's famous. This guy, people just stop him on the streets. Everybody knows him in Roslyn. The transaction, the real estate purchase, is bigger than you just buying a house. Narrow-minded people are like, oh, the real estate agent, they just wanna close the deal, sell the house, and get rid of me. Now, some agents are like that, but it's not sustainable. Let's see the big picture here. Guys, there's more at play. My goal, and a lot of real estate agents' goal, is to provide you with so much value, so much service, so much expertise, that it's not about that one deal, but you have such a good experience that you go and tell 10 of your friends about your awesome real estate agent. The nervous customer thinks about the one deal. They think so small. Where the real value is, guys, and what the top agents are thinking about is how much revenue can that one closed deal bring an agent? Or think about it this way, what is the customer lifetime value of that agent? How much revenue in a lifetime can that one customer bring the agent? And once we start thinking about a lifetime of real estate purchases from you and your network, that's where the top agents shine and that's where your one real estate agent four years ago that still hasn't reached out to you, well, they're just not gonna be around for much longer. And there are still plenty of agents, guys, that don't have the best reputation, that aren't the most ethical, that don't have good customer service and they're still around. So. What's up with that? Well, their time is coming. Through tech disruptions, through innovations, through just plain getting old. There's one agent in my area, the rumor has it is she doesn't take a phone call before 12 p.m. How do you even get anything done? I think over the next few years, because of technology, we're gonna see a ton of real estate agents go out of business. And until then, an agent's reputation and their brand is all that they have. I think ultimately, your real estate agent should be the person that you trust despite what the internet may say. And if you don't trust real estate agents, if you don't see the value in them, then go at it alone. And I truly, guys, I genuinely hope that you have a good experience if you decide not to use a real estate agent. I've seen it go both ways. The game is changing. And no matter what profession you're in, there's always gonna be a handful of unethical players. You can find a trustworthy agent through review sites, through referrals, through social media and through agent websites. And guys, I truly hope you do as much research on your agents as you do on the house that you end up purchasing because ultimately, guys, you want an agent that will represent your best interests from the start of your search to the end of your search. There you have it, guys. A little bit more in depth on trustworthy agents and if they're still out there. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, create a productive day. Take care.